<laughs> yes, yes, yes. Let's go. What's good, guys? Your boy Hugo the Savage back again for another review of She Hulk Attorney at Law. Rip it. Rip it was the title of this episode, episode eight. And yes, finally, you've seen the thumbnail. The man, Matt Murdock, Daredevil, has arrived. And let me tell you, and I'm not, I'm not overgassing it. This is the best episode. Just it was the best episode. The 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 the, the chemistry between Jen Walters and Matt Murdock, the chemistry between She Hulk and Daredevil, um, the 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 addition of Luke Jacobs having more of a part in this. The story was good. Ah, oh, I love it. Let's get into the episode because I don't want to be here too long. They can tell I'm excited. Last week I was all downtrodden about the episode, but they did it. The only thing that's pissing me off is I'm thinking, why didn't every episode seem like this? And obviously not Daredevil in every episode, but you know what I'm saying. So pretty much this episode, um, Jen's uh, law firm, you know, the superior law firm, they take on a case from uh, the, the frog dude, it? and basically when he was trying to fight some villains off in a terrible way and he didn't work out his leg caught on fire by using the thing in his um in his suit tried to blame it on the manufacturer of the suit which happened to be luke jacob who was also the manufacturer of daredevil's costume and she hawk's latest costume and he was currently making her a dress for the lawyer of the year um female lawyer of the year award so conflict of interest her boss kind of dismisses her all the time so said that you know you're gonna have to keep doing it, you have to come and work on this case um Pretty much told Luke Jacobs if she can if he can settle it out of court, and he tore the dress and he said that oh, you won't be working with me again because he never makes anything what's not fit fit for standards, fit for wear. So goes to the court case and that um, she's representing the frog dude, and then the represent the representative representative for Luke Jacobs is Matt Murdock. He comes into the courtroom initially when he walked in for the first minute he was there. I was gonna I was like I think they've changed him a little bit because he seemed a bit more jovial. I get it, though, because it's a comedy. And he, then he started speaking his law stuff, and it took me straight back to um, to the Daredevil Netflix show. He won the case because, basically, Frog Dude had put jet fuel in inside of his shoes, um, which he wasn't meant to. It wasn't part of the thing, so they lost the case. Um, then going from there, we get a call of um, Frog Dude panicking, saying he needs Jen's help but he needs a She-Hulk's help because somebody's chasing him. The person revealed to be chasing him was Daredevil. This is way after the case had gone um, because initially they, Jen and Matt Murdock went for a drink together and they seemed to have a connection. You know Daredevil's a swordsman already. He's a, he's a top sniper. You know what he does on Netflix. And you know what Jen's like in this, you know. She's been, you know what I mean, getting her thing as well. So reveals to be Daredevil, her and... and um. She-Hulk and Daredevil get into a fight over it. Um, and then Frog Dude disappears and gets away. She pretty much mugs Daredevil off a bit. He, he does his acrobatics a bit, but she kind of mugs him off and the fight's over very, very fast. She picks him up, pulls off his helmet, realizes it's him. Then he explains about the fact that he can't see and all this stuff. But the, the chemistry while he's doing this is really good, the way they're speaking. The only thing that's different is the fact that when he was fighting her, he was commentating while he was doing it, kind of like he... He was dropping in these little quotations, these little lines, these funny lines, kind of what Spider-Man would do, which Daredevil didn't do in Netflix, but it's a little bit less serious. Um, then Daredevil reveals that like her her um, client is actually is the villain of this and he's um, kidnapped Luke Jacobs to make him more suits. So then they go on a quest to get him back. And then that's when you get them two together working together, which was pretty cool. And the only thing I'll say is, when they when they got into, I think he called it the, I don't know what he called it, the lily pad or something. It was the frog dude's lair. It was a bit of a comedy villain, to be honest. But when they got there, there was a scene where Daredevil done Daredevil stuff. He really did, and I loved it. It wasn't as gory, but it was dope. And then he beat a few people up. He analyzed the place. He said to her, I can hear all the heartbeats. There's 20 people. It's going to take me 30 seconds to clear them all out and all this business. And she was kind of saying, I'll help. He's like, I don't need your help. He beat up all these people. And then there was a scene where it was all like blue lights. And he was standing there. And he gave you... you everyone knows the corridor scene from, from the Daredevil Netflix. So uh, they did it on purpose because they played the theme song in the background as well from Netflix. And then as they all ran towards him, he beat two of them up and then she just jumped through the ceiling and landed on all of them and then beat them up as well. So I get it though. As much as everyone would like to say that 
this geezer's an absolute G. He can beat everyone up, which Daredevil can. She's obviously way stronger than him. It's like Luke Cage helping out kind of thing. So, um, but yeah, they got Luke Jacobs back. All of that was dope because he because she saved Luke Jacobs. He said that he'll will the drip the dress that he initially ripped up because she took him to court. He said that he'll make her a new dress. He made her a new dress for the gala. They got the scene, which is a bit of clip of it'll be the thumbnail of this video where they're sitting on um the sign and they're talking to each other. A lot of chemistry going on. And he's basically, he's basically saying, like, when you're going back to New York, he's saying in a couple of days, they're giving each other that look. And obviously, these two are both very sexually active in, in both programs. So the only thing I'll say is, Jen doesn't really learn a lesson. I know it's Matt Murdock, but she doesn't know of him. She didn't even know that he was Daredevil. When he explained who he was, she didn't know anything about him. And f- judging from last week, when she was running around trying to get a text message back off this Josh dude, she just was happy to sleep with, with Matt Murdock straight away. So it's a flaw of what she's got, but yeah, she took him home. They did their thing. There's a funny part where Daredevil had to do the walk of shame, but he did the walk of shame in the Daredevil costume, but he had his shoes in his hand and he was barefoot working, walking through the street. And I found that quite funny. Like it was um, it was a real good clip. Um, and then, yeah, they went to the gala and they kind of, listen, they kind of mugged the women off because they, they read out all these amazing attributes about who was winning the award. Then they said Jen Walter's name. She stood up to get her award. They called her Jen She-Hulk Walters, which was funny. And then they started reeling off all these other women's names as well. And basically, it was like a participation. Everyone gets one. And then when they went through each woman to say why they were happy getting the award and stuff like that, what does it mean to be a female lawyer? They all gave like these generic speeches and stuff. I love, what is her name? Mallory. I love her. She's so, is it Mallory? Or is it Matt? You know who I'm talking about. The one who works with Jen. And then she said, um, yeah, it's, it's a, <laughs> she's like, it's very hard to do twice the work and get less of the uh, recognition, having people think they can talk to you a certain way, having been asked what it's like to be a female lawyer and all these things. And he got to Jen and she just went to start bigging up her mom and her dad because she's been through a lot and she's tried. And then that terrorist group who would, would put in stuff online about killing her and doing all these different things, they take they had taken over the screen, the projector behind her, and started like with the, this kind of, do you want to know the truth about She-Hulk? And then started revealing all these things. And basically everything that Josh copied from my phone, they put it up on the screen. He had set up a camera in the room. So when she was having sex with him, that was coming up on the screen as well. And she snapped. Everyone was telling her not to. She snapped completely, pulled the screen down. And then she went into proper Hulk mode, kind of like the original Hulk would, where she's not listening to anyone because she started growling and all these things. She chased down the people in the place that were doing it. Um, and then when she got outside, there were people with guns. I don't know if it's the Department of... um you know, the DOC, I don't know if it was them or whoever else, but they're pointing these guns at her and stuff. And then, yeah, it finished. She looked to the side and she noticed somebody, but he didn't show who she noticed. I'm guessing it was Josh because she doesn't, at the moment, she doesn't know that he's the one who, um, who infiltrated her stuff and that. So I think it would have been him at the side and he's probably working for them and she's realised now. And then the episode finished and we don't, we didn't get a post credit scene, but the episode was fun. It was very intricate. I like the way they've planned out for the next episode going forward because it leaves you on a cliffhanger of, I can't wait to see what's next. Whereas the other one felt like, me personally anyway, I, I once I got into this show and then they were giving me bad episodes, I felt like I had to complete it because you know how Marvel Easter eggs work. And I'm a person that likes to find them myself. I don't want to be told and not watch something. So you kind of feel like an obligation to continue watching. So when you go into the next Disney Plus show or the next movie, the re- whatever reference they make or whatever Easter egg was there, you can connect the dots yourself. So that's the reason. But this episode was really good. And don't get me wrong, eight episodes in, She-Hulk hasn't been terrible all the way through. I enjoyed, I think, if I'm honest, I've enjoyed at least five or six episodes of the eight. Um, and I'd say that four of them have been pretty good. And one's been really good, which was today. So I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. Then it, honestly, though, the having Matt Murdock in this is incredible. Like, he's so good. I just can't, I can't wait for Daredevil now to come back out. I can't wait. Sorry, She-Hulk. I'm not trying to go past you and that, but I can't wait for that to come back out. So please go and watch this episode. If you're one of these people who have clicked off already, said they're not watching She-Hulk, you'll definitely enjoy this particular episode. And it's going to be fun to see who the big boss is behind all of this stuff. Um, didn't really notice any Easter eggs, but I'm going to watch it back again and see. There's a point when I went into Luke Jacobs' office and I literally thought behind her was Dr. Doom's costume, but then I was like, surely Luke wouldn't, he wouldn't be... Um, he wouldn't be doing Dr. Doom's costume, but he just looked like his kind of costume. You couldn't really see it properly. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed it, man. I'm going to leave it there. 10 minutes in. I mean, you boy, you savage. Comment, like, subscribe, and share. Friend.